Hello friends, uh, so welcome to the refresher course in mathematics conducted by Ramanujan College of Delhi University. Uh, so I am Neetu Kumari uh, working as an associate professor at IIT Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. And today I'll talk about uh, the introduction to basic mathematical models in ecology. So in this talk, I will cover the standard mathematical models of single species and two species which exist in literature and how the history of these mathematical models evolved. And eventually I'll talk about a three species mathematical model and different challenges that uh, people or, or the authors face in uh, ecological models and how do they, uh, how do they, they tackle those challenges. So uh, you can actually find uh, the details of the basic mathematical models in ecology in some of the popular uh, books of uh, mathematical ecology. Uh, for example, uh, the book by John Pastor, uh, the book by Marcotte, L. L. Rockwood, and uh, uh, another book by uh, Opagan Engel. So anyone who is interested in getting into uh, in depth of this uh, models in ecology can refer these books. Okay. So we will start this uh, lecture series with uh, the single species models. So the very first mathematical model that was proposed in ecology was by Malthus. It's known as Malthusian uh, model, also known as Malthus Malthusian exponential model. So in this model, uh, we assume that n is the growth rate of the population uh, and is the population density. So the number of individuals in any population is its population density. It is divided by n here. So Malthusian modeled this population density with this equation 1 upon n d n d t equal to b minus d. So what is b here? b is the birth uh, rate and d is the death rate of the population. So 1 upon n dnt is equal to birth rate minus death rate. Now this difference between the per capita birth rate and death rate can also be assumed to be r known as intrinsic rate of growth. So difference between the per capita birth rate and the per capita death rate is termed as intrinsic rate of growth represented by r here. So this uh, Malthusian ma mathematical model uh, proposed in uh, 1798 was one of the simplest mathematical models in ecology which uh, represented which can be represented by this uh, initial value problem that is uh, d and dt equal to rn with the initial population assumed to be at the constant value n naught. Now uh, if we solve this linear first order differential equation the solution of the model comes in the form as shown in equation number 2 as n is equal to n naught e to the power rt. So what is the nature of this particular solution? We can see uh, very easily from uh, this picture as well. The nature of this particular solution, it grows exponentially. Alright, so this grows exponentially when your r is positive. Whereas when this r becomes negative, then there is a decay and that decay too is exponential or uh, negative intrinsic rate of growth. So this was the very first model uh, known as Malthusian model uh, proposed in 1798 by Malthus. The details of this can be found in this paper. Moving on to the next uh, mathematical model which uh, came at the time when this Malthusian model was very uh, popular. So at that time, uh, Verhulst Pearl proposed uh, this particular model in 1838. So uh, this particular model was the first explanation of what currently is known as the logistic equation or the logistic mathematical model. So the particular, the mathematical form of this model can be seen from this equation number three. So what do we see here? The population growth rate d and dt, it is a function of 
quadratic uh, term of the population size, population density n. So it's a quadratic uh, function of the population size. We can, it, it is simply also known as logistic model in literature. So here the per capita go, uh, growth rate falls to 0 at the carrying capacity k and uh, the solution of this model can be given by this particular form where n is equal to k upon 1 plus k by n naught minus 1 where n naught was our initial population multiplied by e to the power minus rt where r is the intrinsic growth rate which uh, is nothing but it is the difference between the per capita birth rate and the per capita death rate of the population into consideration. So uh, this particular model uh, known as uh, Verhulst Pearl logistic model or simply logistic model has one interesting uh, parameter here this is known as carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity is nothing capital K it's known as carrying capacity so it is nothing but it is the maximum number of individuals a particular environment can sustain based on the available resources which includes the availability of the food which is prey or uh, the availability of whatever food they take. So this is your this was uh, the idea of this logistic model where you have the environment has a certain uh, a certain value which is known as carrying capacity only to that extent the particular environment can sustain the population n. Then uh, and later uh, there are some uh, modifications done several researches research happened in a single species model. So one of the uh, factors that was included in the single species model was alley effect. So here uh, I uh, present a single species model with alley effect. What is alley effect? So we will have to first understand what is alley effect. So in order to understand alley effect, let us first define what do, we under, what do you mean by alley effect. So alley effect is a phenomenon in biology uh, characterized by a correlation between population density and the per capita growth rate of the population or species. So uh, this means we, it is already known that overcrowding is not good for environment. However, uh, when there are too many individuals of a population in any area, they start competing for limited resources, for example, food, space, water, etc. So without enough resources to go around, individuals can starve or they can produce fewer babies, slowing down the pace at which population was growing. But when the population becomes too small or sparse, that can endanger the species too by making it less successful in reproducing or surviving and hence slowing down its growth. This particular property uh, is termed as alley effect. So uh, this alley effect here in this particular mathematical uh, equation uh, model uh, is incorporated using K0 which is the threshold alley effect. So here 1 upon n d n dt is can be uh, written as f of n. So f of n is a uh, function of this population density n can be modeled something like this. So here this alley effect k0 which is your, your threshold alley effect that is incorporated here it can be categorized into two types. The, so the two category of alley effect uh, uh, can be named as first one is the component alley effect and the second one is the demographic alley effect. So what is the component alley effect? So whenever uh, this, whenever it depends upon, so alley effect is categorized into two types depending upon uh, the, whether the decline in individual fitness at low population densities concerns a fitness component or the overall fitness. So if only one fitness component uh, of the population is affected, this is termed as component alley effect. Whereas when this uh, overall fitness is uh, 
is affected due to the low population density then it is termed as demographic alley effect but it should be noted that component alley effect need not always give rise to the demographic alley effect now this demographic alley effect can further be categorized into strong alley effect and weak alley effect so if the growth rate of the population is initially positive that is f of 0 is greater than 0 then it is called as weak alley effect whereas if the growth rate of the population is initially negative that is f of 0 is less than 0 then it is termed as strong alley effect now some population possesses a threshold to the growth for example here the threshold is k not as considered in this particular model the solution with initial condition above k not approaches to k as can it can be seen from this figure and the solution uh, the population which is below this threshold k not k not it uh, with initial condition below this threshold it decays to zero as it can be seen from this figure also the per capita growth rate shows an alley effect or an increase in per capita growth rate over certain range of density that uh, we can see from this particular figure so uh, in in the single species model we uh, have alley effect incorporated also now let us move to the two species model some of the standard two species model that uh, came into literature for uh, and it was studied by uh, studied rigorously by several scientists so one of the very old uh, two species model and very famous two species model is uh, known as dotka voltera model so this particular model which was proposed by lotka uh, combinedly it was proposed by lotka in 1925 and voltera in 1926 so the form of this particular mathematical model can be seen from this equation number 6 so here the system is governed by uh, governed by this particular model where both pre and the predator would undergo constant oscillations and its amplitude bears no relation to the biology of the two species what are the nature of the two species whether the the two uh, populations they are uh, specialist type or they are generalist type it has no connection with the the dynamics has no connection with the nature of the species two species but only to the initial size of the of their population so this was actually one of the uh, uh drawbacks uh, of this particular model and it was very big that it was very unrealistic it has no connection with the nature of the population so it here uh, as we can see this dpdt p is the pre population and z is the predator population so the growth of the pre population at any time t it is modeled uh, by the, uh, these two terms here the pre growth in the absence of predator that is a1 p then minus total killing rate by predator that is b1 z p so this is the pre, uh, the number of populations who are in the pre population predated by the predator population z so uh, the in similarly in the second equation that is the rate of change in the predator population is equal to minus a to z which is decline in the predator population due to absence of their food and another term is plus b to p z which is the conversion of the prey population into the predator population due to predation by the population predator population z so here uh, uh, this was one of the uh, uh, basic two species pre predator prey model used in literature uh, although it has uh, the limitations as discussed earlier uh, that uh, it completely uh, depend the they undergo constant oscillation and its amplitude bear no correlation with the nature of the species into consideration also uh, there are a few assumptions in this particular model uh, it, which was done while modeling this so it is that neither the prey nor the predator population inhibits its own rate of growth this means that uh, the growth rate of 
neither the prey and nor the predator population. It has anything to do with its own population, no impact. Second, the environment is completely closed and homogeneous. And third is every prey has equal probability of being attacked. This means all the prey preys are prey individual prey individuals are equally exposed to predation. Now later, after uh, this Lutka Voltra model, which was proposed in 1925, 1926, later came in 1960 another very popular model uh, known as Leslie Gower model. So here uh, it is the Leslie Gower model can be uh, modeled as shown in equation number 7. So here the DPDT where P is the density of the prey population at any time t and this equation DPDT shows the growth rate of the or the change in the prey population with respect to time and Z is the density of the predator population. So DZDT is uh, showing the change in the predator population with respect to time. So here we see uh, A1 is the intrinsic uh, growth rate of the prey and uh, C1 is the effect of the density of the predator population on the population growth of the prey. So here again A1P is showing the growth in the prey population and uh, due to natural birth or natural uh, growth in the population then C1ZP this term shows decline or decay in the prey population due to predation by the predator Z. Then a second equation here A to Z is the growth rate in the predator population and minus C2 Z square upon P. So here C2 is the number of prey required to support and replace each individual predator. So here this factor uh, C2 Z by P tells us that the rate of growth of the predator population is limited and it causes a decrease in the rate of increase of the predator population as Z increases. So this particular uh, model known as Leslie Gower model or LG model, it leads to asymptotic solution tending to stable equilibrium which is independent of the initial conditions and depends on the intrinsic factors governing to biology of the system. Although it's a significant improvement over uh, the previous Lotka Voltra model, although uh, it, it is limited to its explanations in its own ways. So these were uh, uh, two standard, uh, uh, popular, very popular two species model which uh, are studied in literature uh, for the predator and prey population. Now uh, let us move to three species model. So uh, most of the three species models were uh, based on the, the dynamics of the mathematical model were based on the nature of the uh, population into consideration. So for that purpose uh, we will here uh, before uh, discussing the model in uh, uh, three species let us first discuss the classification of the predators by the ecologists. So ecologists have classified predators into two categories based on their food preferences. So based on the food preferences predators can be either specialist or it can be generalist. So what are the specialist predators? So uh, a specialist predator is the one who dies out when its favorite food is absent or is in short supply. Whereas a generous predator is the one which in the absence of its favorite food switches to an alternative food option. Hence uh, uh, sustaining, or sustaining of the population happens. Although that is not the case in the specialist predator which dies out whenever its favorite food is absent. Now uh, there is an exponential decay of these uh, predators, species predator. Mathematically there is an exponential decay whenever their favorite food is absent. And uh, in the case of uh, genus predator, the per capita growth of a genus predator is limited by dependence on its favorite prey and this limitation is inversely proportional to per capita ability of prey at any instant of so uh, some of the examples of the uh, generous predator we, we can see which can switch to other food options a fox, cat etc whereas uh, owl, 
uh, weasel. They are examples of the specialist predator. So, uh, the in the two species model, uh, it uh, depending upon the nature of the population uh, predator population. So we have uh, one of the basic uh, mathematical models, which was given by Rosenwick and MacArthur in 1963. So this particular model, here the prey population and the predator population is of specialist type. So the prey population is being eaten by the specialist type predator population. So the, the model takes a form as uh, shown in equation 8. So here uh, we can see that uh, the change in the prey population that is DPDT is equal to A1P that is uh, per capita this A1 is a per capita rate of self reproduction for the prey. So this is the growth in the prey population due to uh, new birds and this minus B1 P, P square represents the interest specific competition among the prey population. So it causes decay due to uh, competition among the individuals of the prey and this term is uh, the W is actually the rate at which maximum rate of per capita removal of the prey species due to predation by its predator population Z. So it follows here following type 2 functional response and uh, this is causing the loss in the prey population as per holic type 2 functional response. Uh, the second equation is uh, the change in the predator population with time. So this is equal to minus A to Z. So this is as uh, described here uh, due to predator being the specialist type. So there is a decay in the predator population due to absence of its favorite food. And uh, there is a growth in the predator population due to uh, predation of its favorite uh, food P and here D1 is the, and D are the half saturation constants. So uh, this is another model which is extensively studied in uh, ecology. Then uh, after uh, Rosenwick MacArthur model in 1975 another uh, model that uh, uh, was proposed uh, by Holling and Tanner it's known as Holling Tanner model and mathematically it takes a form as uh, shown here in equation number 9. So here uh, how is it different from uh, the Rosenwick MacArthur model is that the predator is here the of generous type which means uh, the predator in the absence of its favorite food or the favorite prey can switch to its alternative option and it will not die out in the absence of its favorite food. So here uh, the uh, P is the prey population, Z, uh, Z is a generalist predator population and uh, the growth of the prey population is of logistic type, it's logistic growth here and uh, the prey population dies out due to uh, predation by the predator population Z here uh, using Holling type 2 function response and C is the per capita rate of self reproduction of the genus predator Z and uh, this W4 measures uh, the severity of the limitations uh, to the predator population by per capita availability of its prey as uh, in the case of limited supply of the prey there would be uh, limitation of growth of the predator population as well. So this is minus W4 Z square upon Now here, uh, this is a general prey predator model. Uh, this particular model was uh, a particular structure of a generalized prey predator model it was given by Peter Turchin in this book, uh, Complex Population Dynamics. So here, uh, we assume RP to be the density dependent per capita rate of growth in the prey population. And delta Z is considered to be the per capita decline rate of the predators in the absence of prey and f of pz is the predator functional response. For example, if uh, we assume that the predator consumes the prey population using Holling type uh, say 3 functional response or Biddington type functional response, 
So that would be represented by this term f of tz here. And uh, xi is the uh, conversion rate of eaten prey into new rate. So here uh, this f of pz as uh, I introduced here functional response. Uh, so basically we can have based on the nature of the prey and the predator population we consider different forms of these functional responses in the mathematical model. So then uh, for that uh, we must understand what uh, is a functional response. What do we understand by a functional response? So a functional response, uh, a functional response of the, are also known as trophic function of the predator. It is uh, the predator to the prey density ratio in population dynamics and it refers to the change in the density of prey required per predator in unit time as the prey density changes. So there are different uh, types of functional responses that are being uh, studied in ecology or in mathematical ecology. So some of the um, very standard and famous functional responses can be seen here in this slide. So here we can see uh, first one is calling type 1 functional response which is also known as linear functional response which takes a form as shown here alpha p. And then Holling type 2 function response also known as septroid function response which takes the form as alpha p upon p plus a. Uh, another one is Holling type 3 function response it is of the form alpha p square upon p square plus a square. Then uh, Holling type 4 function response so all these function 4 form function responses were given by uh, Holling hence it's named after his name Holling. So Holling type 2 function response or 4 function response takes a form as alpha p upon p square upon i plus p plus a. Other than uh, that uh, then there is simplified Holling type 4 function response which uh, is a nothing but simplification of this uh, Holling type 4 function response. This is alpha p upon p square plus a square. Another functional response is a ratio dependent functional response. So its form is given by alpha p upon alpha beta p plus z. Then uh, these are very uh, popularly uh, used in the literature and is known also. Another set of uh, uh, popularly used functional responses are hassel valley functional response that uh, takes the form of ap upon bp plus z to the power m. Then uh, next is Barrington reagents functional response which is of the form uh, omega p of alpha plus beta z plus gamma p. Crowley Martin functional response that uh, takes the form of alpha p upon 1 plus dp plus bz plus bdpz. Then there is Evlev type functional response that is alpha p 1 minus eta minus beta p. Another one is Evlev like functional response here uh, we do not have this uh, term 1 minus so it is alpha p eta minus beta p. And then there is linear ratio dependent that is just alpha p upon z with this uh, term in the uh, denominator that is missing alpha beta p which we see in the standard ratio dependent function response. So uh, the uh, details of these uh, function responses can be found and, and the meaning of this uh, individual parameters in detail can be uh, seen in these two references. Okay, so uh, now that uh, we have uh, considered, we have we have seen basic mathematical models studied in ecology. Now uh, there are different uh, goals that are uh, taken into consideration as uh, a problem for for mathematical ecologists, which they solve through these mathematical models. So, uh, what are those? Uh, uh, goals or problems that mathematical ecologists discuss. One of them is understanding or studying the chaotic dynamics in the mathematical model. So what is that, uh, what is the, uh, this uh, chaotic dynamics? Let us uh, discuss it in brief here quickly and uh, uh, how do we, how do the, the mathematical ecologists study it? So first of all, chaos is an aperiodic long term behavior in a deterministic system. 
which exhibits sensitive dependence upon initial condition. So uh, we must uh, understand here that there is no well accepted definition for chaos uh, so far. Although uh, people have tried to define it in a certain way and this particular definition, definition uh, has been proposed by uh, Steven Stogitz. Uh, so it tells that it is property of a deterministic system and uh, of what type so whenever uh, it shows sensitive dependence upon initial condition and it's an aperiodic behavior over a longer period of time then it is termed as chaos and chaos is a uh, very uh, very widely studied in ecological models so in order to study chaos in any mathematical model one has to consider a continuous dynamical system and your dynamic system has to be of degree 3 or more otherwise uh, the chances of having chaos is negligible in the mathematical model or in fact it will not occur at all whenever the degree of the system is not at least 3 or more. So this corresponds to just now uh, we are talking about two species mathematical model. So it, it corresponds to the interaction of three or more species. So which we haven't uh, studied so far. So I will be showing some three species model in the coming slides. And as I said uh, also uh, one of the famous theorem in uh, nonlinear dynamics known as Poincare Bendixson theorem. This also uh, ensures or suggests that a solution of two species model systems either converge to a point or to a closed curve and hence uh, uh, it's impossible that chaos would occur in a two species model system. So uh, keeping this in, in, in mind let us move to a three species uh, food chain model. So some of the very popular three species food chain models I will just talk about uh, one or two and then I will come to uh, one of the three, uh, three species mathematical model that uh, uh, our research group has studied. So here this three species uh, food chain model presented in equation number 11 here uh, this is x is the pre population density y is the intermediate predator population density and z is the top predator population. So here we have assumed uh, uh, that y is the specialist type predator and z is the generalist predator population. Now here uh, we see that the growth of the prey population here is again governed by the same dynamics as we discussed earlier that is A0x is the natural growth in the prey population, B0x square is a, a decline in the prey population due to intraspecific competition and this is a, de a decline in the prey population due to predation um, by the intermediate predator y and uh, what is added here is that earlier we had just one predator here we have two predator in, in the picture so y is the intermediate predator uh, which is again eaten by the top predator z. So growth in the intermediate predator population y is uh, given by this particular term v1 xy upon d1 plus x. So just now we discussed about uh, the functional responses. So this is of pollen type 2 as discussed earlier. Then again y is eaten up by the top predator population z again using the pollen type 2 functional response and this is uh, the death rate of the intermediate predator y it's natural death rate and again since z is of generous type hence this growth is modeled by the term c3z square which was proposed in uh, this particular uh, these two papers so growth of a generous predator can be modeled using quadratic growth term which was given here as c3z square uh, and uh, minus this is the v uh, decay of the top predator population given by this particular term v3 z square upon d3 plus y. Now uh, here this in this particular mathematical model uh, it is studied in the literature that this is a very uh, dynamically rich mathematical model as it can be seen from this figure. 
So there are uh, existence of strange attractor in the mathematical model as seen from this first figure with the phase plot of x, y. Then also uh, it has a change, th there is a bifurcation in the mathematical model uh, which we can see from this particular figure where a naught is the bifurcation parameter and uh, this is the attractor that is plotted for uh, this particular mathematical model. So here we see that uh, there is uh, and, and also uh, authors have seen cures in this mathematical model when we have three species population model with the top operator being the generous type. Let us move to the next uh, three species mathematical model. So this is study, this is also study in literature. Uh, so here your top rater, how is it different from the previous, in the previous case? In the previous case, the top rater which was assumed, uh, assumed, which was considered is of type, generalist type. In uh, this particular, mo particular model, the top predator is of specialist type. So here, uh, X is the prey population, Y is the intermediate predator population which is of specialist type and Z is the top predator population which is again considered to be of specialist type. So the dynamics of the prey population and the dynamics of the intermediate predator, predator population is exactly the same as in the previous model. However, uh, we can see the change in the dynamics of the top predator population uh, in the sense that here uh, this minus Cz is coming which is uh, the death in the top predator population in the absence of its favorite food which is obvious since Z is your specialist type top predator. And growth in the uh, predator population Z is happening due to consumption of the intermediate predator Y and it follows uh, the following type 2 function response. So what is seen in this particular model is that, uh, so it's a 3 species model and uh, this here initially there is a stable focus in the, in this mathematical model uh, which uh, eventually changes to a limit cycle by changing the sensitive parameter involved. I'm not getting into the detail of uh, the sensitive parameter here or other dynamics uh, that is seen here or the goal of this particular article. Uh, so uh, the, my goal of showing this mathematical model here is that what are the different types of models which exist in literature for understanding ecological uh, systems and what are the different problems that uh, authors address while discussing uh, such type of mathematical models. So here in this particular mathematical model where uh, which is based on the mid intermediate predator being specialist and the top predator being specialist as well. Here uh, it was uh, seen that uh, initially there was a stable focus and uh, this dynamics it was dynamically very rich model and by changing a certain parameter values a limit cycle was seen and uh, then a chaotic attractor was finally seen and it was a uh, period uh, and the route to chaos was a period doubling which is seen from this figure C. So uh, this was another three species food chain model uh, which is uh, being studied in literature. Now uh, this is a Husting Powell mathematical model which was uh, proposed in 1991 and uh, here uh, in this Husting power model, your x is the uh, number, sp number of species, number of prey population at the lower level of the food chain, y is the number of uh, species that preys upon x and z is the number of species that preys upon y. Now the growth of again here the, uh, the dynamics of this prey population and the intermediate predator population is uh, the same as we discussed earlier. However, the top predator uh, Z, we can see here that this is the death is minus of type minus T2Z, which is a decline in the predator population due to the absence of its favorite food. And here this is again uh, the growth in the predator population, which follows following type 
two functional response and it is due to the predation of the intermediate predator y. So uh, this is a Hulling, Hasting and Paul model which is uh, being studied in literature and this uh, here this model also exhibits chaotic dynamics as it can be seen from uh, the time series shown here and further the chaotic attractor also is seen in this Hasting Paul model top type attractor is seen in this mathematical model. Now, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, work that uh, we have done. So, and it is uh, uh, very interesting because this particular problem opens up another dimension of uh, uh, studying this ecological models in literature. So, as I was mentioning earlier that uh, one of the major goals of studying this ecological model is understanding the dynamics of this of that particular model. Another goal of uh, uh, studying such ecological models is to understand the distribution of the populations in, a, in space or in a simple words how these uh, populations are distributed in a particular region or locality wherever they exist. So that is done using uh, the pattern study of this of these population uh, the population into consideration. So in this particular mathematical model that we have considered the basic structure is of Hasting Powell type and what we have done is that we have introduced refugia and alley effect in this mathematical model and uh, our goal was to see the pattern formation in the mathematical model is if there is any pattern formation in these populations and also to understand the uh, if there is any significant effect of uh, of alley effect and refugia, refugia on the dynamics of the mathematical model. So here uh, the refugia is being uh, introduced using this uh, this particular term here as we can see. So what is M here? Uh, so it is assumed what is refuge what, what do you understand by refugia so it is whenever a portion a small portion of the population is able to escape predation that is termed as refugia and uh, this can be supported by environment or other possible ecological factors so here we have assumed that a portion small portion m of the prey x it always escapes the intermediate predation y and that is why this term is coming here in this first term that is a1 1 minus m xy. So what is happening the remaining 1 minus m portion only takes part in the interaction with the intermediate predator y that is why here we have considered 1 minus m times x into y and here also 1 minus m of x. So this is how we can incorporate different ecological factors in the mathematical model for example just now as we have incorporated the refugia effect all right then uh, next we have considered alley effect in the prey population here as shown by theta so here we have assumed weak alley effect so we weak alley effect is incorporated in the model using this term x upon x plus capital theta so uh, rest all uh, uh, details of this Dynamic, dynamics of this model is same as uh, explained just now in the previous slide of this standard foreign type model, Husting and Powell model. Now uh, this particular mathematical model uh, we have first of all what we have done we have in order to reduce the number of parameters involved as uh, if, we, if there are uh, number of parameters are more it is difficult to understand the impact of these parameter on dynamics. So therefore, we have non-dimensionalized this mathematical model in order to reduce the number of parameters and hence we obtain uh, the mathematical model in this particular form as shown in equation 15. And uh, non-dimensionalization of the parameter has been done as per shown here. So uh, here we have uh, studied the dynamics of the proposed mathematical model in the absence of refugia and alley effect 
both. So what do we see here is uh, we have considered this parameter B1 here, uh, this parameter B1 to be the sensitive parameter and uh, with respect to this uh, uh, bifurcation parameter B1, it is seen that initially there was a stable dynamics and later it there, uh, there was a uh, period doubling which was seen here and then it led to chaotic dynamics. Uh, in, so we see that in both uh, prey and the intermediate predator population as well as in the top predator population. And uh, we see this result, uh, this presence of this uh, bifurcation and uh, stable dynamics changing into chaotic dynamics in all the uh, three, three populations in the absence of refugia and any effect. Further, we see the time series uh, of all the three populations, prey, intermediate predator and the top predator population. So, and also we see uh, the attractor which we obtain for this particular uh, mathematical model which shows a strange chaotic attractor as seen from this figure here. Now, uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, one of the goals uh, is also to understand what is the impact of these ecological factors on the dynamics. So, uh, with that motive uh, in our mind, we uh, try to see the effect of uh, alley effect, the impact of alley effect on the dynamics. So, is it, does it uh, have any effect on the chaos present in the mathematical model and does this alley effect can actually control chaos? And which is one of the very popular uh, problems in, in ecological dynamics to control this chaos. So, uh, what we saw is that um, this uh, theta is, a, is a, the alley effect. So, when we increase the initially there is a chaos in the mathematical model, but as, uh, as seen in, in earlier uh, uh, simulation as well that the stable dynamic changes into chaotic dynamics. Now, when we have this chaotic dynamics and when the theta is introduced, and as the value of this theta increases, this chaotic dynamics changes into stable dynamics as it can be seen from this figure. Then uh, intermediate predator also we see the similar pattern, the chaotic dynamics changes into stable dynamics as this alley effect uh, changes or increases. Then in the top predator population as well, we see that as the theta, value of theta, uh, we, as we introduce theta into the model which is your alley effect and as we increase its value, the chaotic dynamics changes into stable dynamics. Now, uh, this can also be seen uh, uh, from this uh, phase uh, portrait uh, the, or the, uh, the phase space plot. So, what do we see here is that initially there is a chaotic attractor seen in the system and here we have, we are increasing the value of this uh, alley effect theta and we see that this chaotic attractor shows a, a period 2. Uh, limit cycle and then there is a limit cycle that is seen and eventually it, it converges into a stable focus as it can be seen from this figure. Now further uh, we attempted to see what is the effect of this uh, refugia on the control of chaos. Can this refugia also can control chaos? So as we just now saw that alley effect has a significant impact on uh, the chaos control, it can actually control the chaos uh, present in uh, the model system. So here the refugia parameter M, uh, it was uh, considered as one of the bifurcation parameters and we saw the change in the population, three populations, prey, intermediate predator and the top predator. So the refugia effect as it is introduced and as it is increased, the chaotic dynamics changes into stable dynamics as it can be seen from all the three populations. Also from the uh, phase space plot, we see that initially there is a uh, cup type attractor, uh, chaotic attractor seen uh, for the mathematical model and as the refugia is introduced and the value of m is increased, we see that this chaotic attractor changes into limit cycle and finally it changes into stable focus. So uh, uh, what is seen here is that both refugia and alley effect can actually significantly uh, impact the chaos control in the mathematical model. It can actually cause control of chaos in the mathematical model if the chaos is present in the uh, 
model system. Now, uh, this is another, uh, another model that uh, we have studied. Uh, so this is the basic uh, backbone of the mathematical model that we considered which was uh, by given by Friedman and Gluon. So here we tried to see what is uh, the effect of group defense on the model and also how to model the group defense, how to incorporate uh, the group defense in the mathematical model. So what is actually group defense? Uh, so it is a phenomenon seen in the prey population uh, in, in response to the predator population when they attack on it. So what they do is that they, they defend themselves using a group defense uh, property and uh, this can be seen in the musk, of, musk ox population and there are many other population as well where we see the group defense. So what uh, has been seen in literature is that uh, holic type 4 functional response and simplified holic type 4 functional response, evolved type functional response and Ibler like functional response, all these uh, functional responses are be used to model group defense in the, in the prey population. But uh, there are rarely any uh, studies where uh, this group defense is studied in three species food chain model. So what we did, uh, we tried to see that uh, how can we model the group defense in three species population model. So for that purpose we consider this standard mathematical model where the growth this is the prey population growth and uh, this is uh, the decay in the prey population that is uh, here p of u1 is uh, the functional response to be considered which will uh, so what we did we replace this p of u1 by the Ibler like functional response to in order to model the group defense. So this is the mathematical model that uh, we considered in our study. So here we can see that this alpha u e to the power minus beta u1 is a wave like function response that we considered and it models group defense in the pre-population. So this is uh, here it is coming as again alpha 1 u1 u2 e to the power minus beta u1. Now, uh, as uh, uh, we, uh, we can see, this Ibler like uh, functional response is a non monotonic functional response. Alpha u e to the power minus beta u is a non monotonic functional response. Now, uh, let us uh, understand various uh, factors in this mathematical model. So, R is the birth rate of the prey, uh, K is the carrying capacity of the prey, and uh, A is the half saturation constant here small a. This is your half saturation constant of the intermediate predator as shown here. Alpha 1 is a conversion coefficient from uh, prey to the intermediate predator and uh, from prey to an inter intermediate predator. Gamma 1 is a conversion coefficient from intermediate predator to the top predator. Gamma 1 here, this one. Now uh, d1 is the death rate of the intermediate predator in the absence of prey. And D2 is the death rate of the top predator in the absence of intermediate predator. Now, we have uh, uh, studied this uh, mathematical model in a specially ex extended form because one of the goals of the study was also to understand how these populations are distributed in a spatial domain. So uh, this is one of uh, this is another uh, research goals in many of the ecological studies uh, to understand how these populations are distributed in spatial domain. So we consider this positive initial condition and uh, zero flux boundary condition for studying this uh, uh, spatial extended mathematical model mathematically. And uh, the domain that we considered was a, a square domain uh, in R2 that is 0L cross 0L. So uh, we studied this uh, mathematical model and uh, we saw the uh, change in the transition in the dynamics of the mathematical model. So what we saw that uh, when this beta term, it was, uh, which was which was one of the sensitive parameters, when this is changed, uh, actually this is increased, then initially uh, there is stable focus dynamics in the mathematical model. So the stable dynamics changes into limit cycle and then it, it, it changes into the uh, period 2 limit cycle and then finally it changes into chaotic dynamics at beta equal to 0.11. Also 
at beta equal to 0 0.15 uh, the extinction of the predator population was also seen which is uh, one of the uh, phenomenon that is uh, seen in ecology when there is a group defense by the prey population. Now uh, we here studied both the temporal system as well as the spatial extent model system and we investigated the presence of chaos in the uh, in both the mathematical model. So the temp by temporal model I mean uh, this equation number 19 this my mathematical model we investigated and we saw existence of chaos in the model and uh, the spatial extent model is this equation 21. So here uh, we saw that uh, this time series there of chaotic nature and the attractor that we found it was also strange chaotic attractor seen in the temporal mathematical model given in equation 19. Now this is the uh, dynamics that we observe for the spatial exercise system and we saw that initially there was a stable dynamics and eventually which led it led to a chaotic attractor uh, which was obtained from the space series of the mathematical model. So the space series is, is shown here as a chaotic of chaotic nature and its corresponding chaotic attractor also is presented. So uh, here we started at, at uh, the number of numeric, number of simulations uh, uh, which was done was at t equal to 500. When we increased the simulation time to 1500 we saw uh, very clear strange chaotic attractor in the mathematical model, special extent mathematical model. Further, uh, uh, we studied the patterns present in the mathematical model. So for that purpose, uh, what we did, we perturbed the uh, initial value with a small, very small perturbation in the prey population and the top rated population. So the initial condition that was considered is of this particular form. Uh, and we also considered, uh, we, we investigated the pattern formation in both one dimension and in two dimension. So in the two dimension, this was the initial condition that was considered with the um, other values fixed at this particular value as shown here. And uh, in one dimensional case, this was the perturbation considered. So here uh, what was seen the, that we fixed all the parameter values as shown here for the simulation and we were changing the value of the uh, diffusion coefficient in the three population that is prey, middle predator and the top predator population. So the diffusivity coefficient in the prey population is delta 1, diffusivity coefficient in the middle predator or the intermediate predator is delta 2 and the diffusivity coefficient of the top predator is delta 3. So we are changing these and we saw that at uh, and also the beta another parameter beta was changed and what was seen is that we saw an extensive range of uh, uh, spatiotemporal patterns as well as Turing patterns was C, which is presented in this figure. So here, uh, what do we see that uh, this first figure it shows uh, spatiotemporal patterns. Uh, in the the first column is for the pre-population. The second column are the spatiotemporal patterns obtained for the intermediate predator, and the third column is for the top predator population. So the parameter values are already shown earlier in the table and what we are doing is that we are changing the time for simulation and here uh, when the simulation when, when this uh, simulation was done for t equal to 500 this was the pattern of uh, or, or the distribution of the species which was seen in the spatial domain. And as we increase the time we see that uh, this patterns are changing with time which are spatiotemporal patterns. We can also uh, see how uh, this is evolving with time. So we can see here from this uh, movie that uh, the prey species as the time increases this prey species converges to a type of patterns which uh, shows how this prey, prey uh, population is distributed in a spatial domain with time. So as we can see here the prey population is uh, very well distributed in the spatial domain and it, it shows how we have 
reached to figure D from A. It, it, it covers all the intermediate uh, distribution of the prey population over time. Similarly, we can see for the intermediate predator and the top predator as well. Now, here in the second figure, uh, what we did is that we changed the value of the uh, top, the diffusion of the top predator population that is delta 3. So, it was uh, delta 1 and delta 2 was kept same as in this figure and the delta 3 was changed to 0 0.1 and other parameter values remain same. So, we see that a different range of a different set of spatial retrieval patterns are seen here in the first column for prey population as compared to the first column here for the prey population and then the second column for the intermediate predator and the third column for the top predator population. And also we can uh, we can observe the progress of this distribution of the population on a spatial domain with the help of the uh, with the help of following how these uh, 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 populations are changing in a spatial domain with the help of this movie that uh, anyone can see using simulation. Now here uh, again we see we further change these value of diffusivity coefficients and we see another set of uh, spatial temporal patterns in prey population, middle predator population and the top predator population. Here uh, what we have done, we have uh, again changed the value of delta 3. So the delta 1 is 1, delta 2 is, uh, we have also changed the value of delta 2 as well and delta 3 as well. So we see uh, another set of spatial temporal patterns. Again uh, in this particular figure also we see that these patterns are changing as we change the diffusivity coefficient. So here we have reduced the uh, movement of the middle predator population. So from 0 0.01 we have changed delta 2 to 0 0.0001 and delta 3 was 0 0.0 earlier we have increased it to delta 3 equal to 1 and we see that a wide range of patterns are being uh, of the spatial temporal patterns are being seen in this uh, mathematical model. Further, uh, we have also seen a Turing pattern in the uh, mathematical model as it can be seen from these two figures. It is a one dimensional Turing pattern which was seen. So, it is a ripple type Turing pattern and this is a vertical stripe Turing pattern was seen. And in the two dimensional domain as well, uh, we saw a range of uh, Turing patterns as it can be seen here. So, here we see that initially uh, the prey, prey species is distributed well throughout but eventually as the time increases uh, it start taking form of uh, a very regular form of the distribution and eventually we see a Turing pattern of this particular type which is presented in that figure and further it changes into patchy type Turing pattern as seen here and which becomes stationary after time t is equal to 4000. So, uh, we saw a very wide range of Turing patterns as well here. So, what do we, uh, uh, what do we saw from this study is that uh, this is another uh, very interesting problem to understand in, in ecological models that how this uh, prey population, intermediate pro population and the top population, how they are distributed uh, over uh, a particular region or locality wherever they exist. And what is the impact of various ecological factors on the, on the dynamics of these population uh, into consideration. So, this was a, a, a little a small brief of the mathematical models that we study in ecology and what are the uh, goals in mind while studying these mathematical models and what are the different uh, math, uh, basic mathematical models that we consider for studying such ecological problems. So, that is all. Thank you.